Hello, hello, and welcome again to In the Spotlight series, where we shine a spotlight on entrepreneurs, SMEs, and innovators. I'm Maxine Crow, your host, and I'm absolutely delighted to have on the show again HD, founder of founder and CEO of InMaps Technology X Technology. HD, how are you today? Super good, super good, super honor uh, to be here. Very happy to share. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Oh, you are more than welcome. So the last time you were you were here, um, I, I think I went a bit a bit gentle on you in terms of just understanding about InMaps, what it, what it, what InMaps is, what it does, a little bit about yourself. So just for our new audience and new listeners, um, tell us, introduce yourself. Just tell us a little bit about your career and um, love the story about your first job. So t tell us that. Tell us that again. Oh, well, well, let's go way back. Well, I'm, I'm, I was born in Vietnam, so uh, I started doing business very young. So uh, helping out my mom with. She, she's really the entrepreneur of the family, so I got my entrepreneurship gene from her. From her, um, eight eight years old, I was already helping her delivering coffee to coffee shops. Uh, would wake up like two a.m., help roast the coffee beans, and then five a.m. on my bike to deliver uh, coffee to the shops. And then uh, we we left Vietnam when I was ten. We actually ended up in Hong Kong. Uh, we were in a refugee camp, and in the camp, I was selling uh, food at the street market. Yeah, you know, so I, I, I kind of learned how to negotiate and everything when I was very young. Uh, coming to the U.S. in in high school, uh, my uncle showed me a, a printout. Uh, at the time, he was working for, I believe, Xerox. And he showed me a printout of just the really basic computer printout. And I looked at it like, wow, this is really cool. That's what I want to do, you know. And then so uh, fortunately, got to MIT. And I got into computer graphics, learned how to, that was like my first internship at MIT Media Lab. And then uh, I worked on speech recognition for my uh, uh, master's thesis. This was 20 years before Siri. You know, wow. we were teaching computers how to, to recognize human speech. Wow. Um, and then after MIT, I went to San Diego to work for a wireless company. And that was the first formal, uh, formal job. And I worked on a team that helped the Built the world first wireless data modem. Uh, we didn't we didn't have text messaging back then, so uh, that was pretty cool to be able to send data wirelessly. Um, after that, then it's been you know uh, well went back to to Kellogg at Northwestern for my MBA, and then it's been a thirty years plus career as a serial entrepreneur. Uh, this is my uh, in math is my fourth startup, and mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate. I feel that I'm able to combine my two passions, which are uh, entrepreneurship and technology mm -hmm. and it's just something i really love I, I really feel that i'm actually doing a day of work you know it's more like i'm just going, waking up and working on my hobbies you know so it's very 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 fortunate yeah oh that's yeah. absolutely absolutely amazing so i'm gonna i'm gonna dive right in so i've i'm i'm actually let's just delve a little bit deeper into into in maps and 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 the technologies and, and what you do with the company. So, can you tell us what the future of in what the what the future vision is for the future of InMaps? Yeah, InMap really started out um, more for wayfinding, and it was a personal problem. Uh, I kept getting lost in the airports and malls, <laughs> and I was pretty frustrated. You know, I was looking for digital maps, and I'm like, why isn't there good digital maps out there? So, I decided to start a company to build them. So, so we start out as a, uh, a wayfinding uh, map platform, mainly for airports and malls. And then along the way, customers just start asking, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? For example, hey, can you map equipment? Um, can you integrate with sensors? Can you? And then so the, the platform has really evolved, right? And I'm really surprised sometimes we still get customers who are on static floor plans or even spreadsheets, you know? and uh, and I mean, now we're seeing more software like CMF software, uh, IWMS software, and so on. So the industry is, is migrating toward digital tools. Mm -hmm. And so in Maps, we're, we're part of that, right? We're, we're yeah. basically a digital twin platform. We integrate uh, or core technology, which is mapping technology. We integrate it with equipment locations. We integrate it with IoT sensor and spatial analytics. And, and the goal is that this platform we want it to be like what Google Map has enabled for outdoor application. 
So what Google Maps has done is that enable uh, you to find the nearest driver or the nearest restaurant, right? So InMap wants to be that platform that enables location-based application for indoor. Uh, for example, be able to track where the equipment is, be able to uh, monitor the IoT sensors or the spatial analytics of your building. And so we're really building this platform that's enabler, right? And, and the, the goal is really um, how do you measure the performance of the building? How do you mm. diagnose problem? How do you fix them? And how do you plan, right? So, and then ultimately, I also envision that we'll currently facility for the most part is an on-site job. Mm. Um, but, you know, as what the pandemic has done is that now we're going to more of a hybrid environment. Right. And so the Java facility would, should also be eventually hybrid so that, but to do hybrid, you need telecommute tool. You need to be able to monitor the building remotely. Right. Mm. So, so in map is enabling all of those applications. And I, I see not just in map, but I see other vendors are moving toward that as well. Yeah. 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 That's, that's absolutely amazing. Um, so just, just tell us then, um, what have been the latest developments since we last had you on as a guest on the spotlight? Yeah, I mean, unless you've been living in a cave, you've heard <laughs> AI, you know, I mean, everybody's talking about AI, right? Mm. And so, you know, we looked at it and and actually we applying, we are applying AI in our own uh, platform as well. Uh, so for example, we can enable AI to recognize equipment for inspections. Uh, just by taking a photo, for example, well, then you can recognize the, the model of that piece of equipment. It saves a lot of data entry. It saves a lot of uh, error, right? So there's there's huge cost saving benefits. Um, internally, we're also applying uh, AI to write marketing material, to do documentation, uh, even the right code. Believe it or not, um, yeah. we have been able to to use AI to write test code, right? Yeah. And so it's it's really cool. So I mean. Every every company should be aware how an AI can help there, either internally or externally. So yeah. so that's that to me is a huge game changer. Yeah. So we've been using it. There's there's a there's a a dear a dear friend of ours that said that we should um, liken AI to uh, to being an administrator where it does like the the seventy five to to eighty percent of the work. And then the, you, got that, you, you, you take it the rest of the rest of the way. And it's really important that, you know, it doesn't replace our intelligence and our, our human skills, but right. using it in the right way gives us those efficiencies and gives us time back to then right. focus on whether you're visioning, whether you're strategizing. So I, I just I just love love the love technology and, and what and the benefits that it can can bring. You you're Definitely. absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's that's that's exactly how to look at it. Is it saves you from the grunge work. Mm. It, it saves you from the tedious work and then that frees you up to do the more intelligent work. Mm. Yeah, so Absolutely. Yeah. So HD, what features are you most proud of with Inmaps X technology? Cuz I know you've been working on a lot of yeah. new, new things, new developments. Yeah. So so I mean from from the start um, you know, we want to be innovative. We want to build something that's not out there in the marketplace, right? So from the start, when I mean, we designed the platform originally so that we can innovate, we can add. And so innovation, I would say, is one of the pillars of our platform. Yeah. Uh, for example, like integrating spatial analytics or integrating IoT sensor with indoor mapping. Yeah, that has not really been done. So then we're we're taking that leap. We're seeing other people doing that as well. And I think it's overall good for the industry. Mm. Um, we focus a lot on ease of use. So ease of use is actually really hard to do. To make something easy to use takes many, many, many iterations. Um, we listen to our customer and your user really intensely. We're, we're listening to see like, what do they like? What do they don't like? Um, our software probably run, gone through hundreds of iterations. Mm. I mean, if I, if I pull up you know, the, the software releases and I look at them, we've gone through hundreds of iteration to make the software easy to use. And uh, one of the thing I'm really um, proud of at Trade Show is when somebody look at our software and say, oh, wow, so they, they go, wow, that's easy. Within five yeah. seconds, they get it. And that's mm -hmm. really what, what we're so proud of. And it takes a lot of work to make it like that. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then lastly, I would say that the third piece is we we always think about compatibility, meaning we, we're, we don't want to throw this tool in the air that people is going to change their processes and it's going to be too hard to learn. Uh, what we find that if it's too hard to learn and if there's too much work, people won't use it, right? So we, we think a lot about how does this tool fit in with the rest of the other tools in the box? Mm -hmm. um, and then how, how, do, how does it also fit in with the process that they have in place so that they're not going to change something? Um, so when we design our platform, those are really three things we think about. Mm. That's that's a, some really good stuff, cool stuff to be proud of. And I, I know for, from ex, from experience, you know, when when we look at implementing pro, new processes and changes within the built environment, the first thing is it, it's about this how hard or how easy is it? Ease of implementation is absolutely key, especially for the people that are going to live and use it every day. Um, you want to be proud that you can oh my gosh this is just so easy it just makes your life as a as a building manager or facility manager um easier and saves you time That's yeah we're, we're both mm -hmm. you know old enough to remember command line computers mm -hmm. <laughs> you know right yeah. so i think i think the great thing about <laughs> apple and the mac is it basically took a command line interface and make it graphical right and then once it makes it graphical then it opened up to so many other people mm. that, that's what we're trying to do right here as well we're trying to make a user interface that is very visual very intuitive so that you don't have to be an expert in order to learn how to use it right um mm -hmm. I, I love it when i go on site and i show a customer and within five minutes they're they're productive they start using the software they start like you know going around and taking photos and stuff right away um so that that's what we really want to focus on yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. Um, can you tell us which industries you've targeted for this technology and how will they benefit? Yeah, I think there are, we usually look for three characteristics. Uh, number one is we look for a dynamic environment. And so by that, I mean a lot of people moving about, a lot of equipment moving about. Um, usually you have a lot of visitors to the site so they're not familiar with the environment, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so dynamic is one. We look for large sites. Um, a small site, for the most part, you can probably manage it with, you know, everything's in your head, you can remember mm -hmm. it. The larger the site, the more complex it is. Um, and then we also look for uh, campus environment where you have multi-sites. Um, the, the more complex, the better it is uh, for us as far as being able to help the customer, right? Um, so some of those are about airports, um, hospitals, malls, universities, right? Those are really mm -hmm. complex environments. Um, and then that's when we go into the platform. And our, our platform, not, not, I mean, it has so many applications uh, that the obvious one is facility management. But yeah. then you know, we also do wayfinding. We also do um, IoT sensor monitoring. We also do spatial analytics. So all of that it's like the whole suite um and and those are really really useful environment to have our technology in yeah and um i'd imagine as well um because i remember an experience having experiences in the pharmaceutical industry where there's a lot of loose equipment and loose assets in laboratories yeah, have you, yeah. Have you, and and that that for me would be an ideal place as as well the pharmaceutical industry because how do you keep track of all those hundreds and hundreds of little pieces of equipment yeah if you go into a hospital today everything's on wheel and, mm. and so everything's moving about everything's changing uh the staff is changing every 12 hours you have a new staff you have visitor coming in you have patients who's in and out and so everything's moving in that environment um, so that's actually one of our more challenging deployment. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah, but how would how would you deploy in maps in in the hospital environment? Is it, yeah, is we it have a, we have a couple of customers, um, and they're using um, they're using wayfinding map. They have like a kiosk, so visitor mm -hmm. come into the lobby, and I want to find a clinic or I want to find where my doctor's office is. So that's that's the first level, right? Yeah. And then we have operational facility folks who want to know uh, where their boilers are, their chillers, where their uh, power generators are. Um, 
we have secure people who want to know where all their alarms are. And alarms, we have door alarms, we have panic buttons, we have uh, all kinds of sensors, right? Um, so, so the that environment, there are many, many people involved. Um, even like security who wants uh, evacuation maps in case of emergency, you know, what are the routes and uh, what's, what's the protocol. Um, so there's many, many different ways to apply our technology to such environment. Um, and our customer actually deployed these um, in those capacities. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's absolutely fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Um, okay, so time to just stretch you into the future a little bit here. What are your predictions for the next five years for the built environment and tech solutions? Yeah, um, I think if, if I if I look at a lot of our customers, I would say many of them are still using, using AutoCAD, many of them still using floor plans, right, uh, spreadsheets. I think what's going to happen in the next five years, they'll move more toward digital tools, um, more toward software, more toward IoT sensors, uh, tools that are that enable um, remote capability, right? Yeah. Both for for monitoring, for measuring performance, for even remote controls, right? Um, for example, a lot of systems right today you have to be on site. Mm -hmm. um, if you create a work ticket, you actually have to visit that room or that location to diagnose. Mm -hmm. um, and if you if you are at home, two a.m. and you get this call, you gotta get out of bed and go I, to work. You I've know, done that in the past. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and page up goes off, and then you're there. That that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah, my dad, he's been in HVAC for thirty seven years, and he gets those calls, or he used to, and yeah. he would get out bed and go to work and his work is like an hour away yeah um, so i think the digital will enable more remote capability um and then the other thing is i think there'll be better understanding how the space is used mm. um for example I, I remember one time i talked to an architect and from from a very one of the top architectural firms and i asked the person what happened after you designed the building and you hand off to the builders and then the builder builds it. And how do, how do you know if that building actually performed to the way that you design? And he said, I don't know. I don't have any data. So it's, it's kind of like, I just designed this awesome sports car, but I have no idea how it runs. Oh, right? wow. And so I think moving forward with more sensor, more measurement, more understanding the space, I think the facility manager and the management will be able to understand how the space is actually being used so that they can mm. optimize it. Yeah. So mm. I, I, I see the trends go in those directions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More, yeah. more adoption, more adoption of the, and acceptance right. of the technology. Right. Mm. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Okay. So how can facilities companies and business leaders benefit from InMaps X technology? Yeah, I think a built environment is an asset in your portfolio, right? And it can be either a revenue generator or a cost center, right? A, a hotel is obviously a revenue generator. A hospital is a revenue generator. Uh, a warehouse might be more of a cost center or like mm. an administration building is a cost center, right? So as as if I'm the management, if I own this building, then my goal is how do I optimize this asset, either on the revenue per square feet or per square foot or cost per square foot, right? Um, if I'm renting out a space and that's easy, I know what the dollar is rent per, per square foot, but am yeah. I really optimizing it, right? Am I really like maximizing the potential of this asset? Um, and then on a cost basis, okay, I can look at my utility bills and my labor bills and maintenance, and I can divide by square foot, but am I really optimizing it? By that, I mean, for example, let, let's take a mall, right? Um, you know, there are dead spots and there are hot spots. If I don't know where my dead spots are, then basically I'm wasting the potential of that space, right? Um, so I, I, I see as management, um, you need to know how to optimize your assets, right? Um, so so that's as a business leader, that's one thing I would look for. Mm -hmm. The other thing I see in facility management is, uh, and I, I kind of empathize with you guys and the, our customers as well, is it's very reactive is fighting yeah. fire mode all the time 90 percent of the time yeah. you're fighting fires right so how do we have these tools that enable more proactivity 
and less reactive, right? Um, and to do that, you need you need both to plan. You need both to respond faster. Uh, you need both to know when the incident happened sooner. Uh, and so the 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 sooner you can diagnose something and repair it, the the less the damage, right? Mm. So so as facility as the executive, these are the things that should be thinking about how to employ technology for the facilities to help with operation, optimization, the revenue, and then also minimizing the costs. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. yeah I, that, that's so true. And I, I, I do remember the my, my facility management days when you're in these buildings and the aim was trying to switch from that reactive to proactive. And you could do it with some things, right. um, but there's always that unknown element of incidents that might happen in your building that you need to respond to. But yeah, I, I, th I think, you know, what you're doing within maps can really benefit um, uh, that, that predictive, that forecasting, the data stage um, right. in buildings. Yeah, it's, it's like having a car. If you don't perform the regular oil change, mm. then one day it's just going to stop running, right? Whereas if you do the regular oil change, then you're actually in this nice operating um, and it will last much longer. But then how do you, as a building, how do you know how to do the regular maintenance? How do you, can, can, can you diagnose something very quickly when it's a small problem so that it doesn't become a bigger problem? If there's a water leak, how do you know that there's a water leak instead of by the time it leaked all over the place and, you know, damaged mm -hmm. the whole floor, right? So, so that's the kind of thing where um, if there are better tools to help the facility manager, and, and then I think then they can be more proactive as mm -hmm. opposed to reactive. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you have to put your thinking cap on now. What was the most complex project that you've done and how long did it take? Yeah, I alluded to that a little bit earlier. Um, hospitals, I think, is the most complex. I would say airports too. I think airport, it's also pretty complicated. But hospital, I think, is the most challenging because um, number one, hospitals is a mission critical environment. Yeah. Um, you you have you have patients, and if you can't find that piece of equipment, you know you, you that patient might die. You know, yeah, so, right? So, uh, or you have the operating room, and I remember my dad would tell me like, if the pen temperature is too hot, too cold, then now you can't operate, and and now you're affecting patients, right? And operating room is the most important room in the hospital, um, and so so it's a mission critical environment. It's mobile, it's time completely dynamic. Everything is moving around all the time. Uh, people, equipment, uh, there's visitor coming in and out, there's patient in and out the, the building. So I think all of those elements added to, to the, really the complexity. Um, and when we work with the hospital, we work with actually multiple team. We work with the, the facility team, the operation folks, and, but then also the marketing folk. Mm -hmm. um and also like you know customer experience services folk um even mm -hmm. like stuff like holiday decorations uh you know we had a customer where in the u.s you have thanksgiving followed mm -hmm. by well you have halloween followed by thanksgiving followed by christmas in the span of like six weeks or so i guess mm -hmm. um and so even like putting up and down decorations the quick turnaround required, you know, and yeah, I never thought about it until like, oh yeah, that makes sense, you know, but they, they actually use our map to remember where they put up the decorations <laughs> you know, so that they can take them down and then put up the new one. Right. Um, we'll find, or, where they, find where they've stored them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Finding where they stored them. Right. So definitely hospital, I think is a very challenging environment and uh, it definitely put us to the test. Um, so now we've done a few, we actually think it's really, really a great application for our technology. Mm. Can you can you just share with us? Um, so I know I remember when we when we met a couple of years ago, there was um Stam Stanford University is a good a, a good example that you give of a of a campus. So can you just talk about that that product as well? And and what fascinated me about about Stanford was just how many buildings uh, on that campus that you, yeah it's, yeah. it's a really wide coverage because it's not one site it's actually maybe well the the total building is like over 200 buildings and it's spread out over 
um, I don't know if you've been to the San Francisco Bay Area, but it stretched right. from all the way from the north of San Francisco all the way to maybe 90 miles south of San Francisco. So wow. it's a very, very wide area. Um, so, and then, and then the staff is managing multiple sites at the same time. Um, and so they're, they're, comp they're mobile. They're not dedicated to a single building, right? Yeah. So, so they spend a lot of time moving between buildings. And this, this is where I'm talking about the tele remote capability yeah. is that if they had the remote tool, maybe they didn't have to drive two hours across the bay to get to that building. Yeah. Maybe they could easily see the data, the situation remotely and call in to the guy on site and say, hey, the shutoff out is in room 202, you know, go up there and turn it off. As opposed to usually what they do is they would actually have to drive to the building, go to the, the storage room where the floor plans are, open up the floor plan, <laughs> you know, search for it. Okay, the shutoff out is here. And then they go and shut it off, right? Whereas we would have all that information in the palm of their hand. So literally, they can see every building on an iPhone or an iPad, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so it was really interesting to see how widespread the the deployment was. Um, the The mobile force was very mobile; it was moving mm -hmm. around all the time. Um, the and then they had so many situations with visitors. They had, and this was during the pandemic too, where they had yeah. to set up the, these these COVID clinic like within a few days it has to be up right yeah and then and then you have to have wayfinder direction for people who come visit them um so it was really interesting situation there are a lot of lot of scenarios where we were able to help them yeah. um so that that's that's a a really good example of a widely distributed campus with multiple buildings multiple workforce um and then on top of that not only the internal staff but many contractors um, yeah. come on site and usually the contractor they're usually not familiar with the site you got 200 buildings how do they how can they possibly remember 200 buildings right mm. uh, and then that's that's where our technology also helped because the internal staff was able to share the information with the contractors yeah um, they are able to create a map say here's all the the air conditioners or here's all the fire alarms um, or here's a shutoff valve for if you're gonna work on this this water cooler Here's a shut off valve, make sure and turn off the water, the, the water line first before you unplug that water cooler, right? So it's, it's stuff yeah. like that. It was it was really, really uh, fun for us to work with them. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that uh, that example because it just really demonstrates the, the different layers of complexity that your technology goes into right. to support support the the buildings and the campus. Um we have concerns in in the industry around breaching of firewalls, cybersecurity. So yeah. how, how do you manage these risks that clients have and concerns that they have? Yeah, I've, I've been through a security certification process before with other companies in the past. And then also we have done ourselves within MAPS. And one other thing about security is actually 90% of it is about people and processes mm. and 10% of it is about technology, right? Um, and so I think the first thing is, every vendor has to be aware of what are different security protocols and what are the different ways to get hacked for example um like some people doesn't even know you know what are what, what is a good password you know password is not one two three four <laughs> you know but amazingly you go in a lot of sites they're still using one two three four as a password you know so just just simple stuff like that right so mm -hmm. so the staff needs to be trained like if you're getting an email with a kind of like questionable attachment well, and from somebody you don't recognize with a very strange uh, email domain name, well, don't open it or open it, but don't download anything, right? Don't don't start running it on your, your laptop, right? Just being aware of like stuff like that is a starting point. Um, there are, so for example, um, in, in Europe, you have 20, uh, ISO 27001, uh, and then in the US, we have SOC 2. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a really good idea for every vendor to go through that process and that training, because then it will teach every employee, every contractor, what are the, the processes to, to keep your um, data more secure. Mm. And that in case there's a breach, what should be done, uh, who should be uh, on call and diagnose the situation. So a lot of that is, is training and awareness. 
Um, and then technology is like 10%. Make sure you have antivirus, make sure you're, you have encryption, make sure you have proper backup procedures and data yeah. and so on, right? Um, so none, none of this is uh, rocket science. Unfortunately, it's kind of boring. <laughs> so, so, so you just have to force your staff to do it. You know, nobody you write like to read 50 page document on security, you know, mm. uh, unless you want to fall asleep, <laughs> but you just have to do it. It's, it's, and once you do it, then everybody's more aware and then they will practice, um, safer, um, mm. procedures and so on. Yeah. So how, how do you combat, how do you get over the, the challenge and the hurdle of client client firewalls with with your technology oh yeah this is a really good question um we so so one of the things we learned very early is it folks are super busy and so when we go into a, a client site if we have to ask it hey can you can you set up a server for us can you install some software for us they just don't have time right yeah so when we design our technology, one of the first thing we think about is how do we design it in, in a way where IT doesn't have to do much work. And for that, it means it has to be cloud-based. And yeah. But then once you're in the cloud, then there are very specific scary stuff that you have to follow. Um, yeah. And so if we follow Amazon AWS procedures and processes, um, and they, they host every company is probably running on AWS today, right? Um, so they've been running 20 years. Um, and so we, we follow um, their recommendation. We use their technology for security. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say AWS is pretty good. Microsoft Azure is pretty good. Um, Google as well is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, so, so make sure if it's in the cloud, make sure you use a very, very well established um, infrastructure that is secure. Um, so, it's, but the way we design it is that we, we want it to be totally um, turn on key. Yeah. So so you go in, um, once we build a map, you have our web portal, you have our app, it runs on the guest Wi-Fi. It doesn't need to like go through wirefall or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, if it's cloud-based, it still has to be secure. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, how can the audience learn more about your technology? Yeah, um, start with our website, um, see what our products is. And then we also write periodic blogs to show more about the, our technology and how it can be used. Um, we're coming out with a YouTube channel where we'll make videos, just short ones, because yeah. nowadays online is like very short attention span. So we'll make like short video tutorial, say, hey, this is a way where you can use indoor mapping technology, or mm -hmm. this is a way you can um, use in map for for your applications um, so we'll, we'll have a youtube channel and then periodically i think we're, we want to do like a weekly series where we'll show uh, videos how to use in maps yeah okay so share i've got a couple more questions for you so share share some information around so i know that you recently developed uh the in maps app is, is that is that now live is that live yeah we have we have um you know, because we built a platform and on top of this platform, you have different applications. Mm -hmm. So so we have application for uh, for wayfinding, for example. Mm -hmm. We have application for facility management, right? And then we have application for, uh, for shows and events where they need maps for exhibitors. Um, we have application for safety. Uh, we're working on like safety maps for mm. schools and universities, right? To in case of the ev evacuation, you need to have safety maps. Um, so, so we have multiple applications, not just one, because uh, really, in map is a, a more of a platform. Yeah. We start out with one application doing wayfinding, but we have really evolved since then, and so now we're able to accommodate different situations and different environments. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So do you plan to be at any exhibitions and conferences in the near future? Yeah, next month we'll be in Denver. Uh, I don't know if you can come, but this is the IFMA uh, workplace. It's, I'm, it's I'm huge. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. So uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be uh, in Denver next month. Um, annually, we do we do IFMA, uh, we do um, NFMT, uh, we like Realcom. Unfortunately, we don't have anything on the in Europe uh, on the calendar, but we will go to Europe and visit you. Yeah. I promise. It used yeah, to be. So. It used, 
there used to be um a euro euro fm euro fm conference yeah. we do tend to have quite a few now that we've got over the covid there there are big exhibitions and so like the xl london where there's ex exhibits and also the nec they mm. tend to be they have technology ones they have fire workplace conferences so they've they've all really picked picked up picked up again now so it would be great um if if my world workplace have you done is that the one that you you go yeah yeah it's a pretty a big ones. one i mean we we had last year we met people from australia you know so it's, it's a it's a pretty good one um yeah if, if you recommend a, a one in europe for us then we'll definitely go to that one in the future yeah definitely I'll, I'll definitely have to um send some send some information over on on that one um so hd if our audience and anyone wants to discover more or, or arrange a demo um how can we what's the best way for them to contact you yeah please go to inmaps.com uh with a z not an s so i n m a p z dot com uh, we have a contact us page there that you can contact us. Um, you are welcome to even email me directly. Uh, email is hdvo at inmaps.com. And I uh, would love to hear from you. Yeah, that's brilliant. HD, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on in the spotlight again. And um, <laughs> if we're going to do a third time round, I think uh, let's arrange a let's arrange a demo. Actually, yeah, live that would be cool. Time. That would be cool. We can we can actually show show our audience just you know it's it's great talking about the technology and learning about this amazing technology, mm -hmm. but it'd be really great to actually show. So next next time, let's um. Yeah, let's let's. Do I would that. love that. Yeah, I would let's love to do, do that. that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, um, and thank you everybody uh, joining, and uh, um, we'll see you again next time. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk soon. Take care. Thanks, HD. Thanks, Maxine. Okay.